So last night, I had a, uh, a dream, and in the dream, a lot of stuff happened in the dream, which I'm not going to talk about because it's not relevant, but towards when I was, you know, the end of the dream, I was waking up, someone told me in the dream, and I'm paraphrasing it because I don't know where for where, basically, but what I got from it was true healing is not for people who are living in willful sin and the people who really don't know God, basically the unsaved. And the only person, the only reason would, uh, would someone who is unsaved gets, get healed however that is spiritually or physically is because that healing will either give God glory or it, it, it must give God glory, but it also must lead that person to repentance. So true healing is for believers and it is for a sign that will lead to repentance because I saw from time to time, um, I see, I mean, I come across believers and it's particularly in one movement and it's a charismatic movement, but where people go around healing, they can see someone in a wheelchair, at least here in America, they can see someone here in a, here in a wheelchair and they go up to them. Can I pray for your leg? So-and-so. And then it's like, it's kind of forced. It's kind of, it, it, it's really cringe. It's really cringy because when the healing doesn't happen, that person is left thinking, okay, this guy came up to me out of nowhere and he asked for me to pray for him. And now I didn't get healed. Now in that person's eyes, you look, you look sort of foolish. And, in, and I'm not saying we won't look foolish for the name of Christ, but it's like, you did it in vain. That person did it in vain. And now you're left with someone who 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 that 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 moment, that instance or that act could possibly harden that person's heart even more towards the gospel and towards Christ. Because everything we do must be spirit led because not everybody it's not in God's will for everybody to get healed. That's why, you know, Jesus told us to pray according to the Father's will. If it's the Father's will, such and such will get done. And in, in praying, I was thinking like praying towards the Father's will. It reminds me of the story in Exodus. God told Moses you know, stretch out your rod or, you know, and the seas will part. And God used Moses to part the Red Sea. And it wasn't in Moses' power. Like, he prayed, like, before that happened, he prayed to God because the people was, were getting scared because the, the Egyptians were behind them and God and Moses prayed. But he said, why are you praying? Use the rod. And so he used the rod and it part the Red Sea. But all that happened because it was God's will. It was God's will for that the Red Sea to part. It was God's will for those 10 plagues and God uses uses Moses to do those things. You know, it, all, all those everything happens, miracles happen because it's God's will. If it's not God's will, it's not going to happen. So yeah. So healing it comes with it comes, it must come with God's glory and it must lead to repentance, you know? So, um, I want to go out today. I'm just going to stay in one book. I usually bounce around, but today I'm going to stay in Matthew. Start from Matthew chapter seven, verse six. 
Okay, he Jesus says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. And so it's going back to that example I gave, healing that person in the wheelchair who you, who it wasn't God's will for that person to be healed because that person in when it's crazy i mean in god's eyes people who are not saved people who are just living in sin and like they're just people of the world the children of the devil they are seen as dogs you know um they are people who who have a hard heart towards the gospel and so you going up to ask for them to pray for them or trying to heal them it's like, and it's it's like same thing. Casting your pearls before a swine, and you're giving what is holy, which is healing, and maybe even prophecy, or or trying to prophesy, or all these things, and pray, which is holy, and you're trying to you're giving it to the dogs, basically, you know. Uh, even Revelation, Jesus taught, uh, taught, said, you know, outside of the are the the unbelieving and and the liars and hypocrites and all these things were outside are going to be outside of the gates of heaven? He said even the dogs. He's I think he started off saying outside of the dogs. So, you know we we in in you know chapter seven verse six we're familiar with casting pearls before swine, but I don't hear this often and and I just you know. I just realized, man, this this is in here like. Give not which is holy unto the dogs. I don't hear that often. And I, you know, I, have, I haven't read that often or lately. So it's just like, wow. Um, because that verse corresponds with later in uh, Matthew chapter 15. If we go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 26, Jesus, he's talking to that woman who was, um, I believe, a Gentile. And this is what happens. So I'll start with verse 23, actually. Be, uh, so, and behold, no, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and, tr and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered, her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away before she cries after us but he answered and said i'm not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of israel then came and then came and she worshiped him and saying lord help me but he answered and said it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs i used to think that he was you know i knew he wasn't trying to just diminish her but he was I didn't realize why he was saying, you know, was calling this, you know, basically a woman a dog. But it, it's actually a parable. He said, it's not me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. So that means, basically, he was sent to the people. He was sent to the house of Israel. And it's, and it's kind of a, basically a parallel you know, on today, because we who, who are safe and believe in Christ, we are part of the children of Israel. And, you know, in, in uh, I think Galatians or in no Romans, it's, it said and we are spiritually Jews. We become Jews in the spirit. So it's like he was there being sent to, to heal and, and do miracles upon those who already believe in Christ, who are uh, who who already believe in, in Yahweh and, and Elohim. Those who already know God's word, those who already know of God, and so he 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 came there first to heal them because he's not gonna go first to people who don't even know God and try to heal them when they don't even know God, they don't know his statutes, and their hearts are hard. But my point is, he was basically testing this woman to see if this this woman is really coming after me because. She truly wants to surrender her life, to her, surrender her daughter, surrender her 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 unbelief, you know. 
this is this is the real reason why um Jesus allowed her her daughter to, to get delivered it's because it's ultimately because of her faith if we are we are sent to it's basically okay we are sent to those who are going to have faith who whose faith has been kindled faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this woman, she heard of Jesus. She heard of his miracles. So that's where faith kicked in. And she came unto Jesus by faith. And so verse 27, he said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs uh, eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto thee, even as you will. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. My point is, it's not God's will for everybody to get healed. Even some believers. Maybe God appointed a time for them to heal. Some Sometimes there's people who have a uh, thorn in the flesh or not. But true healing is going to lead to repentance. It's going to lead. Uh, it, it gives God's glory. And it's true. True healing is for those who have faith. And who are not going to trample on God's God's miracle, God's God's uh, wonders and his his acts. We have to come to people with the same approach about casting pearls before swine, because I'm not going to like <laughs> the spirit knows every I, do, I try to do everything spirit led. I don't talk to my family, my my what? my fleshly family or my carnal family the same way I, as I talk to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't talk to them the same because they're on a they're on a different level. They're on a different level. So they can't understand everything that I, I, I will say maybe in the spirit. You know, and pe people us as believers, you we know you know how it is. So we have to come at a uh, different approach to certain people. We can't we can't heal everybody. We can't come to people with healing, or we come to people with deliverance if they're not just if they're not going to receive it, you know. Um, and ultimately, if it's not God's will, so this is um, just a little quick edification, just sharpening. Just don't let these movements, charismatic movements, fool you or deceive you into thinking. We're supposed to be the great physician. We're trying to make ourselves the great physician when Jesus is, you know. He's the one who 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 who, who has the last say so, God. To who gets healed, who doesn't. So don't we shouldn't be going out here trying to cast out every demon we see. Cast, you know, heal every lame person or every crippled person, or people with broken arms or whatnot. It's not always God's will. So, you know, uh, just be wise. I don't know. God gave me this dream for a reason. I hope this is for somebody. Maybe somebody needed to hear this. But it just, you know, reading that verse, Matthew 7, 6, really clicked about giving what is holy unto the dogs. So, yeah. Praise God. Until next time.